It's a little after 12 p.m. right now, and I've been trying to make this video for two hours. I think it's fair to say that almost everybody in this creative space feels like there's not enough time in the day to do the things you want to do. I, for sure, feel that pressure all the time. And it's really frustrating because there's so much to pack into a day. You've got chores around the house, you have work, you have groceries and cooking and spending time with family and, and all the things that you need to do to create a full life for yourself. I just got back from a trip to Chicago. I was there for the Specialty Coffee Association of America's annual expo. Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, it's a bunch of brands that get together and show off all their stuff, and I was brought on by a few brands to shoot for them. So I was doing event coverage, some parties, stuff like that. I'll throw up some photos to give you some context. I don't think I took a single photo of Chicago. All I did was shoot inside of an expo building, which is pretty cool, pretty nice place to spend your time. Actually, it was a ton of fun, uh, but it was really busy. And the problem with being super busy is that you tend not to make enough time for the things you wanna do, you just make time for the things you have to do. I had to shoot for these brands and create photos and reels and all this different stuff, and I wanted to take portraits, but there wasn't really a lot of time. But I was able to take some time. I took a few minutes each day to just grab some people and snap some photos, and honestly, it was such a good reminder that you actually have a lot more control over your time than you think you do, and that you don't need nearly as much time to accomplish certain things as you think you do if you have a plan. For example, yesterday, I was finishing up work and I just messaged my partner and I said, hey, I got my camera with me. When you come to pick me up, can you just do me a favor, put on something nice that you like, and let's go take a few portraits. Hello. This is Katie. You guys have seen Katie on the channel before because she's my wonderful, wonderful partner. Check these out. Brown cow pants. Cow Wait. Brown strawberry pants. I see a brown cow stunning from Drag Race. Um, anyways, we're gonna go and just do a little shoot. I'm gonna take you behind the scenes. You probably can't really hear me. One sec, you wanna see me for a minute? So we're gonna go shoot stuff now because it's a nice night. It's our first nice night that we've had together in a while because we were just traveling so much and we're gonna go take some cute photos. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, nice play with your hair a bit. What would you say is like a really helpful posing tip? Like, like a cue? What's a helpful posing cue and what's an unhelpful posing cue? most helpful is because I've had my picture taken by people other than you and I think sometimes when you're directing people um, not you but like when a photographer is directing people and they'll say like turn your head or turn your shoulders or turn your body versus like tilt like there's certain verbiage that I think um, sometimes when you're the one being directed it's hard to understand what someone's talking about, so it's really helpful when a photographer knows the correct lingo mm. of like, mm. turn your head versus tilt your head. Like right, right. Nice. Can I answer your question? That's great. <laughs> Let your leg that's up, the left leg, kind of hang to the side a little bit. Yeah. Not quite that much. Alright, one sec, one sec. Hello. I'm gonna come over here, so you just stay there. I'm going over here. Gerald, I'm going over here. Hi, Gerald. Or Murray, whatever you want to be called. Oh my god. Uh, we lost all of our light and it got cold and Katie's nose got sniffly so we came back into the car and I would have recorded this outside with a pretty sunset but there's a train going by and it's really really loud. It's really easy to think like oh well it's my partner or it's my friend or whatever and I don't want to always show the same people on my page or in my portfolio but frankly if you want to get the reps in and you want to get better you just got to photograph the people that you can and a lot of time that's going to be friends and family and people that are close to you that's going to be the lowest barrier to entry and you can get better at photographing people no matter who they are it doesn't have to be like a model it doesn't have to be somebody that you are like hoping to photograph one day it can just be people people help you photograph other people
And so if you can just get into that habit, I think that's really, really helpful. So my plan moving forward is essentially to do this as much as possible, to say, I've got a 20 minute window, who wants to come and get a portrait taken? It doesn't have to take any more time than that. And I think it's a really simple and effective way to build your portfolio and get better. Put the word out on Instagram, on Facebook, on, I don't know, does anyone use Facebook? Put the word out wherever you do your stuff. Kids use Snapchat, right? I don't know, do kids use Snapchat? Put it wherever you want. Just put the word out. Say you've got 20 minutes. Who wants to meet me here and just snap a couple photos? Again, it doesn't have to be high pressure. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just go out and take a few photos. If you can commit yourself to taking photos consistently, you will get better. The best way to get better at taking photos is taking photos, looking at those photos and making changes for the next time. That's pretty much it. I just wanted to throw something up here because it's been like two weeks since I've made anything. And frankly, that's the longest I've gone since I started. And it's so weird how easy it is to not make stuff. And that's sort of what happens with photography too. You kind of just get out of the rhythm. Maybe you only ever pick up your camera when people are paying you to do so. And, and frankly, that's, I think that's a recipe for disaster because at that point, like you're only getting better on other people's dime, which is kind of cool in one sense because you're getting paid to learn. But if you fuck something up and you have to book a reshoot and if it's something you can't reshoot like an event, you're kind of hooped and you're probably not gonna get worked with that person again. So I guess it's finding that balance of like getting paid for the stuff you do, but then also, you know, making sure you're not messing up too much. Do y'all wanna see some travel vlogs? Is that something you'd be into? Let me know in the comments. If you wanna see travel vlogs, let me know because I'm traveling a ton. And frankly, I, I go to some cool places uh, like Chicago. Um, that's the coolest one I've been to in a little bit, but hey, why not? Let me know. Okay, thanks, peace, bye.